trying to get home. Oh, 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 Thank you that your love is never ending. Unfailing love and faithfulness. That's who you are. That's who you said you are to Moses in Exodus 34. And it's repeated all through scripture. The God of unfailing love and faithfulness. And you proved it to us by sending your son. You proved that love came through for us. We are changed today because of you. We have a song to sing and a life to live in the hope of forgiveness, the hope of freedom, the hope of shining your light into a world that so desperately needs it. Thank you for your grace that just continues to cover us, continues to flood us each day. Lord, we accept it, we receive it. Help us to walk in it. Thank you for this time of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated. All right. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone today? I don't know about you, but I could just keep worshiping. <laughs> I get so lost. I just love it. Well, I am here today. My name is Dee, for those I don't know, and um, I am going to do announcements for you this morning. So I think the first one that we have coming up, let me just take a peek. All right, connection cards. So for those, for everyone here, actually, if you can fill that out, we would love to hear your prayer requests. I know the staff during the week, they're praying for you. And so make sure that you fill those out. And praise reports, we love to hear the good stuff too. So fill those out. They're, those are going to be on the back sides of the chairs. And anyone that's new here, please take those connection cards and turn them into the coffee shop because we have a great gift waiting for you. So if you haven't done that yet and you've been here maybe already a couple of weeks, feel free to sneak in there and get your gift. Okay, um, next we have a men's breakfast that's coming up. So um, I hope that the, all the guys are going to go to that because I think they have some amazing stuff lined up that morning. Plus you get to eat. Like that's, I don't know, that's good. <laughs> I'd show up for that. Um, so that's going to be June 26th at 8 a.m. and it's going to be down in the 101 down in the lower building. Um, or I don't know if it's going to be in the 101, but it'll be in the lower building. All right, and then we have code red water bottle drop. So that's going to be to benefit the folks at the Phoenix Rescue Mission. I know Michael, that's uh, part of his heart and ministry that he does sometimes during the week. And um, just a way to bless folks in this hot weather with some water bottles. And so we're asking you all, if you could, when you get those water bottles, to drop them off at the North Chapel Church. I believe that's over off of, is that Fountain Hills Boulevard? Oh, Saguaro. Okay, thanks. Yep, so that's the North Chapel. All right. And then so the guys are having their breakfast, the Get Up Girls. We are going to get together as well. So we have our June meetup, and it's going to be Saturday, June 19th, 9 a.m. right here at the church. We're not going to have the big fancy breakfast like the guys, but I promise to have some continental breakfast for you, some coffee and iced coffee. So I hope you can come because we're going to be talking um, sort of about your calling. You know, what's your calling? We all have a place in the kingdom, and I think that's going to be really fun. We've been doing a devotional about that, and it's going to tie in really nicely with that meetup. So that's for Get Up Girls. 
And hopefully I'm not missing anything else. But last but not least, and the best treat of all, our new youth pastors, Trace and Deborah Miller, are going to be joining us next week. So be sure to give them a warm welcome when they come. We are so excited to have them join our team. We have such a great team here at Christ Church, such a great church. And I know that you guys are going to welcome them with open arms. So without further ado, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. Welcome to June. It didn't wait. June came in and jumped right up to triple digits. My wife and I just got back from Oceanside. It was 68. And when you're driving in, you know as you're getting towards Blythe, when you have to get gas, you know you're back in Arizona because the temperature went from 60s to 70s to 90s to 110. And we were back. But, man, I'll tell you, it's so good to be here. It's so beautiful here. We're starting our new series today, Rejoice, No Really Rejoice, a story of joy and transformation. See, I love it. We're going to hit different characters that had that transformation. See, we all have a transformation story, and we have to grab it and, and learn it and share it and love it. I love That's why I'm wearing this shirt today. I know it's black and it's hot out there, but we're changed and I love the shirt, how we did this for baptism. These are our baptism shirts. It's supposed to be like the rippling water when you go under and it comes up changed. And that's so important because it's, it's a hard journey. It's not like, oh, I'm Christian. Perfect life. No more troubles. We're doing good. See, there's some rocky roads. There's things that go on. Can we stay and rejoice? And we should. And that's what we're going to go through today. Our scripture for this series, our main one is Philippians 4.4, 4, where it says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. See, always be full of joy in the Lord. It's not when it's going good, rejoice. See, there's going to be hard times. We're living in a temporary place that we're going to fill with his light. So we have to remember and I think the biggest part of understanding is we're never too bad. See, sometimes we think we're not good enough for his grace. And I love what they said in that movie, man, grace abounds more. See, God loved us so much. Don't get yourself down. Don't think you can't rejoice because of you. Because God is way bigger than us. So he came for all of us sinners. You know, we're all going to fall short. He came for us because we needed him. Okay, if we don't think we need him, that's where we're caught in the world in some parts right now. But the sinners that know we needed him, he came for us because we knew we needed a savior. We needed something to help us, to bridge us back home. That's what he did. See, we can't let the devil fool us into trying to believe his lies. And his lies are worldly things that are, he's trying to push on us that we get stuck in because we're living here. Sometimes we easily get caught up with what's going on here. And the devil is tricky. He's, 
here to steal, kill, and destroy, and he will do whatever he can to keep us down, to keep us from seeking that joy, and to rejoice, to understand if we're changed and we're new, then we can keep pushing forward. See, he'll tell you you're not good enough. He'll, he'll keep reminding you of the things you mess up with. He'll keep that light shining on the bad. And it's so easy for us to get caught up in there and beat ourselves up. See, he makes us think of our mistakes. God doesn't see our mistakes. He sent Jesus to cover those, to change us, to transform us. But we have to be a part of this. It says in Romans 12 to let God transform you. Let go of that negative do not listen to the lies. Stand firm on the truth and know that we are changed. We can rejoice in all times. We need to line our beliefs up and our desires up to the Bible. That's why it's so important that we ask you to read. We ask you to open this up, get in the yearly plan, do a journal, a soaping journal where you're studying it for purpose, for observation, for application to your life, and for prayer. Build it in so you know how to live the truth. That's the exciting part. He's given it to us. He's given the Holy Spirit in us to guide us. He's given the word that became flesh. It's just what we need to understand. When the world doesn't match the word, the word is right. We have to always lean on that. So today, we're starting out, I think, with one of the the biggest transformations in, in life is Saul to Paul. And we're going to reach out and look at what Saul looked like. See, he was a Pharisee. That was a teacher of religious law. And if you're reading it and learning about him, we're going to read some part of that. He was top of his class. It wasn't just like he was in school getting D's for a diploma. He was rolling it and doing it perfect, he said. Look what it says in Philippians 3, 3 and 9. It says, for, for we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. Don't put confidence in what you can do. Let go, surrender, and let God move you. It says, Through, though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could, Indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I am a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church, and as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault." I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. See, we don't have to be good enough. He covers what we are lacking in. He has created us in his image so we can guide and walk along and learn. But it just lets us say, man, I don't have to do this on my own. See, Saul had all the wisdom he thought he needed. But until he let go, and let that transformation happen, that's when he truly can let joy flow through him and he can rejoice. And you see the scene that we showed in the bumper, he's in prison and he's sharing. He's stoned at one time and he's sharing. He's going through and nothing could take his joy. That's why I love that Philippians, always rejoice in the Lord. See, Saul had that moment when that light bulb went off. 
we all have that light bulb moment when it goes off. It's like an aha moment. You ever be, been there and you, 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 you're trying, you don't really think about something, all of a sudden somebody says something, you get it. And you're like, bing, oh, now I get it. It's clear. It's sad. And I might have shared this story, but it's, it's crazy. I was in college and don't know why I was walking to class. I, I know I was walking to class. <laughs> I usually didn't go to class, but no, I was walking to class, and I was just some, for some reason, that song, that kissing song came on where you sing, K-I-S-S-I-N-G, and I'm singing it, and I'm going, K-I-S-S, and I go, bing, that sounds kissing. I never knew that. I just thought it was a bunch of letters thrown together to make a rhyme, and I was like, wow, 20 years old before I got that. But there's an aha moment for all of us. Some take a little longer. There's a book from Kyle Eidelman called Aha. And he shares in the book, every aha moment that makes a difference has three ingredients. One is awakening. Two is honesty. And three is action. See, every time there's that aha moment, that matters, that makes a difference, that we see we let go of ourselves and we let God start transforming us and that change is evident. Those three things are happening. And man, what a difference when we grab onto that. See, hearing these three things, awakening, honesty, action, can you start seeing your aha moment? You had to have one where you were Maybe you've grown up as a believer, but all of a sudden, bam, it meant something to you. Or you were like me, 37 years, not caring about it at all, and at 37 years, bam, something happened, and those elements came up. See, when you went from belief to belonging to Jesus, I know that's, that's weird sometimes to think of. Just believe in Jesus. Great. The demons believed in Jesus. See, when you go from belief to belonging, now there's an impact. See, I can believe a chair will hold me. I can tell everyone, I believe that chair will hold me. But if I don't sit in it, I don't prove that I belong to that and understand and have faith that it really will. That's what that belonging does. When we let our belief go to we're going to belong to Jesus, we're going to change and grow and let that transformation be evident to people in this world. See, belief doesn't make us do. And we're called to do. We're called to go into the world. We're called to live the truth. And that's what we're going to do here at Christ Church. That is how incredible God is. He is always ready for us to choose him. He's always ready. He's not going to make you choose him. He's not going to force you to choose him, but he's always going to put things in your life for you to choose him. And he's just going to keep doing it. He's just going to keep doing it. He loves us that much. He sent his son to die for us. See, really choose him and drop everything else. Don't get caught up in ourselves. It's so hard for us to understand that. That when the Bible says to die to yourself daily, pick up your cross. That means you have to die to yourselves, your feelings, what you think is right, what you want to do, what you desire to do. If it does not line up with the Bible, it's wrong. The Bible is right. Can we pick up our cross daily? Isaiah 41.10 says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Those are scriptures we need to read and celebrate and enjoy because that's what we get to do. We get to rejoice because he is holding us up. He is doing it for us when we let him Hebrews 13, 6. Here's another one. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will not have, I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Nothing. 
They can say whatever they want. They can trash that you believe in Jesus. They can rip whatever you do, but you stand firm. Have confidence and say it with confidence. Don't back down and it'll be okay. Again, this is our temporary home. Think of this question. What was it for Saul? What made that transformation? It was seeing a light. He saw Jesus on the road to Damascus. It made such an impact. He went from thinking, knowing, and living as a Pharisee, doing it perfect, living the law without mistake. I consider it all garbage, he says, all of it. When I saw that light, and I saw what a difference it was. I love this. Look at Acts 9, 1 and 9. It says, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their corroboration in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on the mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down on him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, Lord? Saul asked, and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his com companions led him by hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. See, that light, that seeing Jesus, made an impact. That's an aha moment. What? is your aha moment. Don't lose the fact that you have it and your moment will change someone's life. See, that's what's so cool. We all get to do this. We all get to share and live and shine. See, no matter what Saul did in the past, killing Christians, trying to get them arrested, bring them in, it was done and finished. All that you have done in the past is done and forgotten as far as the east is from the west. It makes no difference to God. Go forward. Don't look back. See, he had a new focus and a new purpose to reach people for Jesus as Paul. We don't have to change our name but man, how incredible it is when we can understand no matter what we've done, no matter what we've gone through, we can accept Christ and go on and make an impact. See, our past is gone. Let it go. We have to be a part of what we do. We have to entertain this life and live for new and live that life out. See, don't keep bringing it up. Satan will bring it up in your ear. Oh, remember when you used to do this? You should do that again. Remember how fun it was? Let it go. Do not believe a lie. That means when our past temptations pop up, and they will. If the devil is trying to steal, kill, and destroy, he's going to use the things that are good to you or you thought were good in the past. He's not going to use things that you don't care about. In seminary, one of my professors was like, listen, I had a problem drinking. I did not like needles. I was afraid of needles. So Satan never tempted me with drugs that came from needles. I would never stab myself with a needle. So he will not waste time trying to tempt you with things you don't care about. We have to understand, it's not he's just going around trying. He knows us and what we like. He is the God of this world. We read about that last week. He's not in charge, but he is in control of tempting and doing things on this earth. And he will do everything he can to keep you stuck. And you've got to step up and say, 
Get behind me, Satan. I have a power in me that is way power, way stronger than this world. And I'm going to you, Jesus. And remember what Jesus did for you. Look at the cross as a new symbol. See, that cross is that symbol of new. It's so important. Sometimes we don't understand or we, we overlook that cross. See, the cross is empty. It's right there on the stage. No, Jesus is not on there. It's empty. He did his thing going to that cross to die for us. We have to understand that it was used to start this death so we could have the burial and the resurrection and eternal life. So I love to embrace the cross. I look at it, and it's so important to me in my life because I know where I was for my first 37 years living for me, and I know what the cross meant. And I have a tattoo of the cross because it means so much. I want to remember it, and I want to, to just look and say, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. So what I did is... The team's going to come up, and I think of the cross as a highlight to the start of my journey. I bought these pennies with the cross punched out, and I want, during this song, the team's going to sing the old rugged cross, and I want you to come up and take one and hold this. Put it wherever. Ladies, put it on a necklace if you want. Keep it in your pocket. Keep it in your car. Keep it somewhere for when you're struggling and you think that you're doing something and you're not worthy, just look and go, man, that cross is empty. Jesus went to that cross for me. So come up and take one at, when they're playing the song and hold on to it. And again, use it as a symbol it was meant for is the start of such an incredible thing. And listen to this song. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross with a dearest and best for a world of lost. Was slain, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies at last. I lay down, I will clean. Someday for a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear. Of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross to my true. At last I lay down I will cleave to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I 
will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Thank you guys so much. It's so nice to have a team that Whenever I ask for a new song or that second, they can pull that off. Michael, I know he wants to watch his phone because when I called during the week, he's like, hey, can you do this song this week? <laughs> but man, it's so incredible. Really, understand the change, understand the transformation, and rejoice. We have something that is so incredible. We should want to share it. Eternal life no matter how bad we were because of what Jesus did. And that cross is just an incredible start for that. See, don't let anyone discount the cross. Don't let anyone. People try, oh, you know, it's the cross. Yeah, he went there. Man, he didn't go there. He wouldn't have gone through what he needed to. And he, that was brutal. And he did it because the Father, that was the Father's will, not his own. No one would have chosen that death. He said, not my will be done, yours. And he did that for us. See, Galatians 6, 14 and 15 says, As for me, this is Paul, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has, begun, has been crucified. And the world's interest in me has also died. I love that. That right there is so fitting for us. Because of that cross and what Jesus did, my interest for the world is crucified. No matter what happens, we can keep going on and understanding. What counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation May God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by the principle they are the new people of God. Let's understand that, embrace that, and love what's going on. Now we see Paul really come to life. Saul is dead and passed in that name. He's now Paul. Once Ananias prays and his sight is returned, Paul is on a mission that is full of joy to share about Jesus. That's what we have to lock into. Look at 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 33. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I have worked harder, been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced dangers from my own people, the Jews, as well as from Gentiles. I have faced dangers in the cities, in the deserts, and on the sea. I have faced dangers from men who claim to believe but are to believe to be believers but are not. How strange. See, we have a lot of people that can say, Christian, we're Christian. Oh, I'm Christian. And they live their life as the world, and they fall into everything the world wants, and they want what they want, but they want to be Christian. Paul is sharing this way back. I've even fallen into guys that people that claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep warm. Then, besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concerns for all of the churches. Who is weak without my feeling that weakness? Who is led astray? And I do not burn with anger. If I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who is worthy of eternal praise, knows I am not lying. When I was in Damascus, the governor 
under King Aretas kept guards at the city gates to catch me. I had to be lowered in a basket through a window in the city wall to escape from him. See, none of the things that he listed kept him from rejoicing. Always rejoice and be full of joy in the Lord. Always. We don't have to worry about that list of things in America. It's such a great country to live in. The freedom we have to shine our truth, to shine what Jesus has taught us is is exciting. We should embrace it, but we should do it. We should understand that God has done everything we need to live our life with, to rejoice and have joy. See, nothing kept him from sharing the good news. Nothing. And nothing should keep us from sharing the good news, no matter what pressure we get from this world. There's a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of crazy. There's a lot of things they're trying to fill our students with, fill our lives with, fill us with fear. Let it go. It has nothing over us because we know Jesus. Now let's look at aha and look how it is to live with those three characteristics. Number one, awakening. See, when our eyes are open, we can see the joy that leads to transformation and we will rejoice. So when we have that awakening, we should have a smile on our face that from ear to ear that we cannot get away because of what has happened. That's an awakening. That's knowing that I was different. I was lost, and now I'm found. See, think of the time when you felt that awakening. Write it down. Share it with somebody. That's why it's so important that we do life together. I love it. My wife had a new, we did a new sign, and she put that, a place to call home. I love that. Christ Church of Fountain Hills is a place to call home. Get in groups. Talk to people. Grow. Share your story. Talk and, and grow together and learn together. We are doing this together, and we're trying to live it out. See, Ephesians 5, 13 and 14 says, but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Let go of your old self and let him give you that light. Awakening is number one. Two is honesty. Be honest to yourself. Let go of your struggles and build relationships at Christ Church of Fountain Hills. This is where we're going to grow. This is where we live. Let's do that so we can go out together to the rest of this state, to our workplaces, to where we shop, to what we do when we travel. And let's be honest with each other. Share your struggles. It's okay. You're going to find out when you get with people and you're growing that you might have a struggle that you're going through that someone already went through that can help you through that. That's what team does. That's what building each other up does. Be honest with people. Don't try to be something you're not. Don't try to be better because it looks better. One of our vision statements is be real. We will be real here. On a staff, we want you to be real. You're not going to shock us what you did. Okay? We're all going through something. We all went through something. Let's keep being honest. Be honest about your weakness. Be honest when you need help. Call. Put down prayer requests. Let's do this together to make it better. You can't fool God. He knows. He's put us together as the body of Christ under Jesus as the head to do this together. Psalm 37, 37 says, Look at those who are honest and good, for a wonderful future awaits those who love peace. Awakening, honesty, and the third thing is action. All these three need to be in there when you have that aha moment to make it impactful, to make it make a difference. See, it is what shows our faith to be alive. We can't only be hearers of the word, 
We have to be doers of the word. James 1.22 says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. If you don't put it into practice, you're only fooling yourself. Live it. Live the truth. If you have questions, ask. We will go through it together and learn together. Rejoice. No, really, rejoice. Sometimes it's hard, but man, look at that. Look at the cross. Look at the word. Thank God for everything. God will move us to joy that will be in all things. Don't let this world take that from us. Don't let it steal that joy. Don't let it steal the chance you get to rejoice and share. We're going to start a time of communion today. So ushers are going to come down and put communion out. I love the fact that we get to learn and study what that looks like. And in 1 Corinthians, Paul shares, For I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, gave thanks to God for it, then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So take that chance right here, that time, and remember what he went through, that cracker that represents his flesh, what he gave up for you, and that blood, that, that juice that represents his blood, how it covers our sins and brings us to the ability to rejoice and see him. There's some scriptures up here. Just thank him. Remember how incredible that cross journey was to him to go there, to die, to take that on for us so we can live forever. Have this time. One cup has both elements. pray. Dear God, we thank you for your love. We ask you to be with us always. Help us to remember that, that you're right there. 
wanting to transform us, wanting us to change, to use us. You loved us so much you sent your son. Let us remember that no matter what. Let us rejoice. We're so grateful that we have the opportunity to celebrate you always. Be with us. Keep us strong and know we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Next week, we're going to be talking about Peter and his denial and his change of life. Love you guys. We'll see you next week.